calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, December 21st, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes. Joe Curl? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. And Len Diggins? Yes, but I gotta get back to the North Pole real soon. We should be getting you there quick. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Douglas Hyam? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Mars is participating remotely. Good evening. This meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely. Sorry. So long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak in order to for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes. It is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All the materials for this meeting except any executive session materials are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard. And we recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, per permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they, they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions until please hold until your name is called. Further, remember that to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call vote. That takes us to the Second item on our agenda, letter regarding the virtual town meeting. Mr. Diggins? Yes, oh, as I said uh, the, the last time we met, Aid, I wanted to submit a letter to uh, my colleagues to let you all know who all participated in helping us to um, conduct virtual town meeting. Uh, Aid, as you can see from the list, I mean, it was quite uh, a large number of folks I mean, and that's just testament to the fact that no one you know, can do something like that alone and, and and this town me for all we may bitterly fight over lots of issues me uh, we can come together me and 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 work to make something happen and uh, I can't thank the folks on that list enough and also the town meeting members who participated in it uh, and when I sent a similar letter to um, the town meeting members and and folks who contributed earlier there were um, four names that i left off i just want to bring um extra attention to them tonight um uh that would be lynette culverhouse and judd pearson um i think the pierce need um uh who um helped with the uh, the town the precinct meetings uh and also um uh kelly uh Linema, who uh, is a senior planner on the staff and she's been a person who's helped with the precinct meetings 
all all along and and um there was a fourth person and right now it's blanking my mind i didn't write the list down so maybe it'll come to me and i'll, I'll come back to that but anyways me and i just want to thank everyone and and, and now it's a part of the official record thank you and mr carl do you have a motion to receive i do i move receipt with, with, with my mr. Han? second thank you Thank you. And Mr. DeCourcy, any comments? Uh, just very briefly, yeah, thank you, Mr. Diggins, for the for the letter and all the work that you had done. We had mentioned that earlier. And I also want to call out two people that you mentioned in the letter, but to work in our office, uh, Ashley Marr and, and Lauren Costa, for all the work that they have done throughout the year and, and uh, for the work they did with town meeting as well. Thank you. Any final comments, Mr. Stiggins? Yes, yes. And that fourth person um, is Carol Band, you know, who helped get the packets out. And so I had um, actually put someone else in her place. Feed it. So once again, you know, you know, when you try to keep a list like that, I mean, sometimes it's not perfect, but you can't be afraid of making mistakes. And and um, thankfully they chimed in, and now they're part of the record. Thank you. When you're making a list, you check it twice, Mr. Diggins. Yes. I know. Thank you very much. <laughs> so. I can't. Right. I can't. We have a motion to receive from Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Attorney Hine. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. We just have meeting minutes of meetings, December 7th, 2020. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes, I move approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. I second. Any additional comments, Mrs. Mahan? No, thank you. And Mr. Carroll? No additional comments. Attorney Hahn? Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is licenses and permits for approval license renewals. So in our packet, we have a list of renewals for contractor drain layer license, class one, class two, and class two non-premises auctioneer, lodging houses, innkeepers, second-hand dealer, public entertainment, automatic amusement, food vendor, common victualler, wine and malt beverage only restaurant, all alcohol restaurant, all alcohol club, theater license, all alcohol package store, and sidewalk cafe. Mrs. Mahan? Um, I have a question, but first I'd like to move approval. Thank you. Uh, and my question would be um, either to you, Mr. Chair, or through you to town council. Um, in, in Contained in these licenses and permits are some businesses that I believe no longer are here in Arlington, like the Venture Pub, Common Ground. Tango, perhaps one or two others. Um, they are in there, but do they just go away by attrition or um, they're in there? How, how do we handle that? Or how do we not do not have to handle that? Okay, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think the board can still vote on a single slate if it likes. Um, at the end of the day, if a business closes as a condition of its license, it loses any common victualler alcohol license associated therewith, unless there's some sort of specific petition to transfer a license or do something of that nature. So uh, for those that have been sort of added on here, whether it was an oversight or whether they asked to be renewed before their closure, you can still vote as a slate um, and essentially those licenses will be defunct. Okay, and uh, um, uh, thank you, Attorney Hyman and Mr. Hurd, I would just ask um, Ms. Marr that of that one or two sentence statement that attorney Heim uh, stated to us uh, be included uh, so that we can uh, vote this as a slate. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? 
Yeah, I'll second the motion. And I have no further comments. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Diggins, any comments? I, I was just curious. I mean, is, is the number of closures any higher than it is um, in a, a, norm, a normal year? I mean, given, you know, I'm expecting it's higher, but I'm just kind of curious. I don't have the actual information, but I can almost. No, no, no problem. I, mean, I, I can ask someone else later on. Thank you. No, another comment. Yeah, I think the answer is yes. Right. Uh, Mr. Corsi? Uh, no comments. All right. Attorney Heim? Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. And I'll note that it's as uh, with, with Ms. Mahan's comment. Great, and that brings us to the next item on our agenda, traffic rules and order on the business. Item number five, discussion and approval, CDBG citizen partic participation plan amendments. Mr. Chaplin. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. So this has been put forth uh, before the board by the Department of Planning and Community Development, and it's a proposed amendment to the CDBG uh, plan and process that this board approved, uh, I believe several years ago. And this amendment is in conformance with all uh, regulations and statutes. And really what it will do is allow the planning department to more quickly issue the draft plan, which then can be turned into the final plan once approved by HUD after all public hearings are held. The current planning requires that the draft plan can't be issued, or I believe actually the plan can't be finalized until 14 days after the final public hearing. Um, so what this would do is remove that requirement of 14 days after the hearing for the plan to be finalized so that more quickly we could be putting the plan into action and thereby the funding into action. Uh, Mr. Hurd, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Mr. DeCorsi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I move approval of the amendment as contained in uh, page two of the town manager's uh, memorandum to us. Thank you. And Mr. Curl? Uh, I'll second the motion, no further comment. Thank you. Mr. Diggins? Uh, well, once again, I'm just kind of curious, what was the rationale for me for the 14 day um, delay? You know, I, I have to be honest, I don't know what the rationale was originally for the inclusion of the 14 day delay. It, it could have been at that time, that's what HUD requirements uh, called for. Um, right. But I, I, I'm not sure why it was originally there. That's why. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm totally on board with this. Makes sense. Right. And Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I put this question out. Uh, it may not have a quick answer to it. Um, what we're voting here obviously pertains to our normal CDBG activities that start usually in January of every year. Um, but with the coronavirus and COVID-19, um, where we do, we have received two additional allocation of CARES Act funding. Um, how, if any way, does this vote affect the past two CARES Act funding and or any future? So it, it does not affect the past two, uh, Mr. Chair, if that's okay if I answer. It, it does not affect the past two as those are already approved and now issued. Uh, and my understanding, if I suppose, assuming was there to be a further CARES Act CDBG funding, uh, the first two had been allowed to be conducted under, let's call them emergency rules, not uh, in strict accordance with the normal course of business plan. So those timelines had already been more streamlined than what we normally do. So assuming that, uh, I guess, two assumptions, one, that there is more CARES CDBG money, and then if there is that they operate it in the same way, this likely would not impact it. But should they not allow us to operate it in that streamlined fashion, this would provide a streamlining such that after the board's final hearing on any new funding, the plan could be issued uh, in a more timely fashion than the current uh, the current regulations allow, or the current plan allows. Okay, and um, I would um, just ask 
the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine. I totally agree with your summation in terms of um, eliminating the 14 day backdating or post dating requirement regarding regular CDPG. And I do accept that um, this would apply to if there were any further federal funding um, would allow us that accelerated process. If you could just, unless you feel confident, which I do feel confident with that statement, but maybe if you could just follow up with planning just to make sure that um, that is the case and or uh, if we need to take a more comprehensive vote regarding the vote before us and any future, future federal CARES Act funding. Thank you. Yes, and, and I, I'm, I can verify that as well. Thank you. All right, we have a motion for approval. Ms. Uh, Attorney Heim? Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, and so the next item on, on our agenda, item number six, is a vote to select and approve a member a board designee to the Envision Arlington task force. Is it? Sorry, Envision Arlington. Is it just called Envision Arlington? Envision, Envision Arlington. I, and I, I, this is either for the advisory board or the standing committee. I, I'm not sure if Mr. Diggins knows. Mr. Diggins. Do so you know? we, uh, I was under the impression from um, Ms. Brazil and our clerk me that it was going to be the advisory board, That's and, um, which is. Well. Uh, different than the standing committee, as far as I understand, and, and I will certainly be in touch with um, town council to find out uh, how that will affect my other interactions with the um, various with the standing committee. I'm not an official member of the standing committee, and I'm not a voting member. I attend a lot of their meetings, which is one of the reasons I was recommended for this position. But I also participate in some of the um, task groups associated. So I will check in with you, Mr. Heim, to find out what. I can continue doing, but I, I would very much like to be a part of the advisory board. Understood. Attorney Hyman, does that, that correct? Yeah. Yes. So um, if, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, members of the select board can serve on more than one committee or board so long as there's some specific thing that's calling for them to be appointed. So there's no problem with being on the select board and being on the advisory board per se, and there's no problem with being on the standing committee as well as on the advisory board. But my understanding is that Mr. Diggins is not on the standing committee as a member, uh, but it's just involved with a lot of Envision Arlington activities. Um, Envision Arlington task groups don't have a membership. They have a um, sort of set of liaisons that are derived from the standing committee. So again, I, I'm, not, I'm not concerned at all. But we, we can certainly talk about it more just to clarify which roles come with which responsibilities. Thank you. Is it appropriate to take a vote and make Mr. Diggins our liaison to the advisory board? Yes. 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 Okay. Me. All right. Can I just ask a question on that um, to the chair or through the chair of town council? Is this a vote before the select board or is this a designee appointment um, with other as with other subcommittees um, by the chair, which wouldn't need a vote? This is to my understanding, you folks are um, voting on whether or not to have Mr. Diggins serve as a the select board's representative, uh, which I believe is ex officio on the civilian advisory board, uh, which is created by town meetings. So it should be a vote of the full board rather than what you're referencing, uh, Mrs. Mahan, which is subcommittees and entities of the select board. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and, yes, and attorney Han, thank, thank you. So, <clears throat> um, so what I understood is that this was the advisory board for Envision Arlington be not the civilian um, uh, review board. It, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. And so, so I would be a designee no to the Envision Arlington 
advisory board. It, and I, this is different than being a liaison be to the standing committee, because usually when you're a liaison, you're an ex officio. It, uh, but I think on the advisory board, it, that's a whole different function. And to, I think to the extent that the board makes decisions, I would be voting as the select board's representative on the advisory board for Envision Arlington. Mr. Chair, may I? Yes. I apologize, Ms. Mahan, Mr. Diggins. I'm sorry, I get my advisory board wires crossed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if this is a um, selection to a um, advisory board for Envision Arlington, it's still not a entity of the select board. Right. So I, I think a vote is appropriate. Um, uh, I understand the board's handled some of these things um, in a couple of different ways, but it's not as if it's an appointment to um, one of your committees. Uh, my understanding is that this would be an appointment of, some, of a larger body and you're selecting which one of you will um, serve on this rather than a body that a member of the board is sort of on as, as a part of its own subcommittee or its own advisory groups. This group is to advise Envision Arlington. So I think it would be, still be appropriate. I will take a motion to appoint Mr. Diggins as the select board's appointee to the Envision Arlington Advisory Board. So moved. By Second. Mr. Carl. Second by Mr. DeCourcy. Any additional comments, Mrs. Mahan? No. Any additional comments, Mr. Diggins? No. Nope. All right, Attorney Heim. Again, my apologies for the confusion. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. And I apologize for the confusion on my behalf as well. All right, next on our agenda, we have correspondence received. So we have forthcoming MBTA service changes in Arlington in the region, Daniel Amsitz, Senior Transportation Planner. We have dangerous sidewalk from ice and snow at 882 to 892 Massachusetts Avenue, Patricia Warden, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 8, former Chair, Arlington School Committee. And we have emergency egress, ingress to private way section of Peck Ave. Cheryl Vosmer, 25 Peck Ave, residents of Peck Avenue, in Lanark Road. And Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I move receipt of, of seven and eight and, and nine. Um, I move referral to a DPW, to the police department and to town council who have all been working on this issue. Thank you. And Mr. Diggins. Second. Any additional comments, Mr. Carroll? No additional. Yeah, Mrs. Mahan. All set. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Hyde. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. And that takes us to new business, Attorney Hyde. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Mr. Chaplin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I think some of my new business may overlap with some other, uh, with some of the board members, but uh, first I would say happy holidays uh, to both the board and the, the viewing public tonight. Uh, next, I wanna share that um, had both an interesting and I would say somber or solemn uh, weekend in, in Arlington. Um, in the interesting part, I was able to tour the Food Link building that's being renovated. I know some board members have had that opportunity as well. And um, I, just from my own perspective, the transformation of that property is really, truly incredible. They're getting close to being finished uh, early in 2021. And the, you know, they've been working on this vision for a number of years now, still serving the community with their critical, um, with their critical services, especially critical in the time of this pandemic with food insecurity on the rise. and. Um, for, for anybody, uh, for any board members who haven't had a chance to tour, I know they would be happy to give you a tour and I highly recommend it. They've really, um, I think they're, they're providing a community benefit via their work 
and they'll ultimately be, be providing a community asset with this building being both aesthetically beautiful and sustainably functionable when it's complete. So, um, so that was a very nice opportunity. Uh, immediately following that, I was able to join Chairman Hurd at a ceremony called Wreaths Across America at the Mount Pleasant Cemetery, uh, taking an opportunity uh, in partnership with our, the town's sponsor in this event, Iron Mountain, to recognize the service of veterans during this holiday season. Um, so that was, once again, excellently put together by our veterans agent, Jeff Chunglo. Uh, and then finally on Sunday, uh, I joined uh, board member Diggins at, uh, again, a, a solemn ceremony where the ghost bike for Charlie Proctor, the young man um, who was tragically killed at the intersection of Mass Ave in Appleton Street, um, the ghost bike to rem uh, for his remembrance and his memorial was placed uh, by, by his family um, and, and those he, uh, his loved ones uh, on Sunday, uh, along with some folks from Mass, <coughs> Mass Bike who helped with the placement. Um, so, you know, I, speaking with some of the family, this was their first opportunity to really have any opportunity to, excuse me, to memorialize Charlie. Um, you know, they weren't able to do a memorial service based on the pandemic. So, um, you know, di difficult for them and certainly difficult to be there, but uh, important to provide the opportunity to memorialize him. So that's all I have for new business. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Diggins? Yeah, so um, uh, three things, I'll keep them short. You know, and maybe I should have said this when the letters came through, but but with respect to MBTA, now that it seems like we're going to get some money from the feds, it'll be interesting to see how things, how that impacts the the changes to the service cuts. I mean, and and as I said in one of our previous meetings, you know, I will um, pursue finding out more about how we are assessed things. I mean, regardless of what happens with the funding, that's something I definitely will plan, will follow through on. Uh, and um, in conjunction with what the town manager said, I just wanted to commend him um, and all the work that he's done on that. It, it was a long process, I mean, getting this done. There are lots of um, um, things through things up. It, things were thrown off track a lot, you know, and the town manager really persisted. And I, I have to also say that I was um, um, impressed, but not surprised to hear that the um, um, Michael Rademacher, uh, head of DPW, uh, and his son actually cleared off you know, that sidewalk space in order to make it possible because he, the priority was to really take care of store removal in town. And he realized that in order to do that, he, it was he, he needed to keep things on track and he and his son uh, cleared that out. And I, I was impressed by that and very thankful for that. And the last thing is I attended the um, Arlington Economic Recovery, no, Arlington Economic Development Recovery Task Force uh, meeting. And and um, this was right after uh, we had done uh, another rollback in and, you know, there there were businesses there that were affected by it, primarily the gyms, and the owners were were clearly upset. But I have to say, I I was impressed by how they how how respectful they were to everyone, and and I also have to um, commend the town manager and also uh, Natasha Wharton, I think is her last name, uh, um, um, uh, who um, were able to respond be in a way that. Um, defended their position uh, without being defensive. And, and I thought the whole thing was really carried out well. And as I've said many times, uh, we make the best decisions we can. We, they may not be ultimately the right decisions, but we do them with the information that we have. And I um, support the town manager and, and the way that he listened to folks and made uh, it clear that if things need to be reconsidered, we will. So thank you. And Mr. Crow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just want to note that this is, uh, this is our last meeting of what has been a very, very difficult year. I mean, not only in our town, but you know, throughout the world. And um, you know, I want to, we can't say enough, but, you know, thank you to all of our um, town staff, um, Health and Human Services, our first responders. Um, as well as the many volunteers who have um, uh, responded during the, the uh, COVID crisis, um, during this you know just very difficult time, um, and have helped facilitate some other difficult conversations we've had around um, equity and and um, and uh, justice. Our work 
all across the board that I know is going to continue. So I'll, I'll just note that today is uh, the, the winter solstice, which means it is the shortest day of the year. And from here on out, we're going to see uh, longer days and more light. And um, I, I hope that as we move into uh, the, the new year, that um, we'll also kind of metaphorically see uh, a lot more light as um, we start to distribute the COVID uh, uh, vaccine and um, uh you know, bring our community back back up um, on, onto its uh, to full strength. So, um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I wish you know greetings of the season to all of my colleagues and and staff, and to uh, all of the residents um, um, of Arlington. And uh, is hoping for a happy new year. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'll try to be as brief as I possibly can be. Um, first, I'd like to uh, thank all the men and women, um, the DPW Department of Public Works, for their work on our most recent storm, considering that we lost, uh, we're down with uh, subcontractors to help out with that. And I know, I know they put in long hours with our first responders to um, respond to that storm event, uh, but I think it was a good, I don't want to say dress rehearsal, but for any storms coming in the future, I, I've been through Arlington and then, you know, Burlington, Lexington, Bedford, etc. And we were curb to curb and most of them still aren't, aren't there in terms of the main thoroughfares as well as uh, curb to curb around our schools, which is very important. Um, the second thing is something that myself and my colleagues have had extensive conversations with the town manager um, uh, in terms of the coronavirus, COVID-19, and now a vaccination plan. Uh, the manager has indicated to all of us that through uh, Christine Von Journo, our Director of Health and Human Services, Board of Health, uh, that will be the entity that is sort of, not sort of, that is overseen um, Arlington's uh, vaccination program. And um, I feel very confident in terms of how they will handle that. Um, and I just would leave through the town manager to our HSS uh, director Bongiorno in terms of sort of getting that plan out and or um, a very difficult FAQ, fre frequently asked question sheet that um, might appear on the town's website in terms of if we could think of the top 10 questions that somebody might have in Arlington uh, that they might have regarding a vaccination program uh, sort of centered around certain populations that might not fall into a regular uh, town interface or PCP or I'm looking and I've had this conversation with the manager or something towards um, uh, developmentally delayed, uh, not so much children, but adults, 22 plus. Um, I don't know if there's anything the town can offer through the Board of Health, Council on Aging, Commission on Disabilities, but I just wanted to put that out there. And then um, uh, the third point, uh, we sort of talked about this a little bit tonight, but the sec second allocation of Federal CARES Act money uh, that the town of Arlington has received um, provides a similar program to small businesses that we offered in the first round. However, the guidelines have been extended. It used to be five or less uh, employees. I think it's now 10. Um, if we can get that word out, and I would just say to the planning department through the town manager, uh, when we initially did this program, the town received really very little um, applicants and, and the issue was getting the word out. And I've had this conversation at CDBG subcommittee meetings that we need to focus on lower income small business, but that means we need to get the word out a different way. And what happened with the first round of the CARES Act II funding was um, myself along with uh, four other Arlington residents, uh, including Kathleen Dossie from Cambridge Savings Bank, we split up the town of Arlington, not just Mass Ave, but Summer Street and Broadway. And 
we all checked in and made sure we walked into the businesses that were applicable and saw far more applicants. And I would just say with the additional staff adding added to the planning department, um, I'd be willing to do that again, but I'd rather not. <laughs> I'm earning my $3,000 a year salary. Um, uh, so I, I would hope that the planning department could do that. Um, but if that doesn't happen, if we could do what we did before, if we don't get that many um, applications, we can extend the deadline and then myself and others can go out and uh, get that word out. And I'm not trying to be a complainer. It's just I'm hoping this me, myself and the citizens don't have to do that again. And then um, I'm still waiting on something I've said, uh, I think three or four times now in terms of um, being mindful of safety of employees, as well as delivering town services. Um, I do know, again, town hall, the select board office, town clerks, treasurers, and I do see the purchasing agent um, three days a week. But if we could really, I've, I've seen like the city of Worcester and others that um, for them city, but town offices are available to be open, usually by appointment only. I'd like to see that with um, all of our town services, not, not just in the town hall. Um, I, I really like to see a plan on that. I, I, I don't want to ask for it again. And then we did this at the beginning of the meeting. Um, but uh, happy Hanukkah, Merry, Merry Christmas, joyous Kwanzaa, and God bless the new year. I can't wait to end 2020 and enter into 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, first off, this, this morning, um, Mrs. Mahan, uh, the town manager and I participated in the long range planning committee meeting um, to start discussing or continue discussions on um, presentation of uh, re revisions to the five year plan and, and the budgeting process for fiscal 22. And, and uh, given everything that has happened um, in, in, in town and, and, and around the country and uncertainty with future um, state aid and, and, and just receipts, it's gonna be a particularly challenging year. Thought it was a very good meeting. Um, there, there were some discussions today that you know, surrounding the schools and the challenges that they have because of the uh, decline in enrollment and, and how that affects the budget process and, and state aid. So we had a, had a good meeting there's going to be further meetings in in January, and I will update the board at that time. Um, I also want to wish my colleagues, um, Mr. Chapdelaine and Attorney Heim, happy holidays to town staff and to the residents of Arlington. Um, as Mrs. Mahan said, uh, 2021 cannot get here soon enough. So thank you very much. Thank you. I also wanted to just thank DPW for all their work. I know they've been working not just the day of the storm, but days and days and days after. And, you know, the roads look great and, you know, you can never make it hundred percent, but they, the job they do is always very commendable compared to surrounding communities. So I want to thank them for all their efforts. Um, as the town manager mentioned, we attended on Saturday, the Reese for Across America event. And again, you know, I feel like a broken record sometimes, but I just, I can never say enough about the work that Jeff Chunglo does on behalf of our veterans in town in the midst of a pandemic. It's really amazing the, the events that he continues to put on for our veterans and really was a, a great event. I want to thank Iron Mountain, the principal sponsors, and then just share you know, that the, there is a tree of remembrance that's posted in the cemetery by the War and Terror Memorial. And it's a place where residents can go to hang either ribbons that are provided or specific remembrances for veterans in their lives. So it's certainly a good thing to participate if you're able to do so. Um, and then the last thing, just to mention briefly, is I just want to share that I did pull papers to uh, run for re-election to the Arlington Select Board. So I do in intend to resubmit them and and uh, run for a second term. You know, I've had a great three years. It's been very challenging. It started off a little slow and then sped up very quickly. And, you know, the past year has been very difficult for everyone. 
and there's a lot that we've accomplished, but there's really a lot that we still have to do. And, you know, I think I have the energy to participate in that. So I will be engaging in whatever a virtual camp, I'll have to take some notes from Mrs. Mahan and Mr. Diggins as to what a virtual campaign looks like, but, you know, I'm happy to be moving forward with that. So on that note, I will take a motion to adjourn. So move to adjourn. Oops, Second, yes, Mr. Carroll. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you, Attorney Heim. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you all. Have a good night, folks. Take care. See you all.